everyone are welcome to Hamlet's TV. Yeah, my people, let's talk about this Aousa lady called Aisha Yusuf. This important and very nice lady that bring out her heart to help others, that bring out her heart to fight for peace, for unity in her country. We all watched her video the first time that she traveled down to London. When she came back to Nigeria, she tried to explain to us what she saw over there in London and how the people are living over there and how there is work, job, light, so on and so forth, infrastructure everywhere. No problem, no stress for anybody, no crime, no criminality in the country. So she tried to, uh, to guys, to let us know what is going on so that we ourselves can still apply those those memories, those, those uh, brains, uh -huh. we can also apply those structures in our own way so that we can function very well. But unfortunately, when this important lady got down to Nigeria, she was, I don't know what I would call it, people are taking her as a racist, people are taking her as if she's a terrorist, that she's not important, so on and so forth. Even in her mother part, where she comes from, in her, in her state, the news that we heard was very, very touching of recent. That the people, the more that is, you know, she's from Muslim home. So the Muslim people in that area, in the northern part, we always normally go to their mosque to pray every Friday. When they finish praying on Friday, they will lay course on her. Tell me, what did this poor lady do to deserve it? What did she do to deserve all this nonsense? What? Somebody that stand up to fight for you, fight for your freedom. Fight for your future. Why did you have to pay her back in such a manner? This is a video that ha that happened in northern area. It's about the people that fled from the Boko Haram, from the Fulanis, from the terrorism in the northern part of Bono, so on and so forth, Medjugorje and all those areas. So these people fled from that their particular homes, and they saw the, they land themselves at uh, Abuja. Up to now, they are living in a camp in Abuja and they are now telling us, showing it to the world, that the government are not even taking any good care of them. Even the camps, all those little little tents, small small tents that they, that they have to fix it by themselves so that they can lay inside to rest, to sleep, to have a future, to think. Some are there for one year, six months, so on and so forth. So we keep on asking, why is our government so incompetent to take care of us even when there is no war in the country not to talk of when there is war so i will leave you people to watch this video very well and you will see and hear for yourself so that it will not be me that has spoiling the government but remind i will remind each and every one of you and i'll keep on saying it that any time that you see anything that is not good you have you will say it if the eye did not see, the, the, bo the, the body will not react, the mouth will not even talk. So let me leave you to fill yourself with this video. And tell me if that lady, if she's right or wrong to fight for her people, to fight for the houses, the whole Nigerians. Just let me know in your comments, leave your comments and let's move on from there. Okay? Yeah, my people, take a look. Thousands who escaped the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria's northeast live in dire conditions in the nation's capital Abuja as they lament that the government has abandoned them. This is Durumi 1, Area 1, an IDP camp in the federal capital territory Abuja. It has been home to over 2,000 internally displaced persons for over seven years. I'm about six months, six years plus some months. So I have um, eight um, children presently now as they open. Yes, yes, we are, we are, we are with the children now presently. You now they killed my husband since the, the, the day that they enter our villages. I came from Borno State, goes to the local government area. According to the Global Terrorism Index, over 2.3 million persons have been displaced from their homes globally and an estimated 1.4 million persons in Burundi State, Nigeria. While many continue to settle in different places within and outside Nigeria, internally displaced persons here in Durumi Camp Abuja State 
they feel abandoned by their government as basic essentials are not provided. We've been abandoned by government because why? A part of other counties in our various states in Northeast Adamawa, Borno, Yobe. This camp is at the doorstep of Mr. President. And this federal capital, no matter who you be in Nigeria today, you must occupy office in Abuja. Because this where things is happening in Nigeria. So for we be at the closed doorstep of Mr. President, live like this. Where do you expect other come to live? How would you expect them to live in Northeast? No good drinking water, no good food, no good shelters to sleep. You understand? Most of this shelter you see, we ourselves created it and copper. Because from the day one we found ourselves in this place, every copper who coming into Abuja to serve in different ministries, they have been with us 100% because, for example, if you look at that class, they are beat by three coppers when they are serving. If three coppers they are serving in Abuja can be two classroom in Abuja. Even government, even government of, official school and government structure cannot reach this, you understand? If three coppers can put two classroom, good structure, you understand? What of other senators, directors, pamphlets and other ministers, especially the like of FCT minister, He's acting as a governor in the FCT. I have never been into this place. He have never sent somebody officially to the camp. Said, okay, I'm from minister, I'm sent by minister. And he's from Northeast. He knows why we are here. We know him, he knows us. We are displaced people from Northeast and he's from Northeast. Describing the living condition as tough, Mr. Omar says the fate lies in the hands of well many Nigerians. We depend on good people, good Nigerians, you understand? So our feeding, daily feeding came from Nigerian. Good Nigerian, you understand? We didn't defend on government hundred percent. You understand? We defend on good Nigerian. It's when I get to this place, I get to know it's one Nigeria. Back in North if his system is one Nigeria, I'll tell you say I have nothing to do with Yoruba man or Igbo man. You understand? But when we get into this place, Igbo man will leave southeast with food straightly to this camp. You understand? Our people will be happy, myself will be happy. Inadequate health care continues to pose a challenge for children especially as mothers complain about worms affecting most children in the camp. So if you are sleeping in the night, you will just see the thing where, where it just bites uh, children like this, like um, like an anti-state anti If you press this that place, you see what we see worm coming for the body. It is from the plain wood that they prepare the tents. The, the tents is only um, tampolin and the nylon. Efforts to get help or support from the government has not yielded much result. The recent disease now that came out of the camp, any children around the camp, if you see small boy on their head or on their skin, if you press it, you see life whom will come out of it. You understand? So we don't know what caused that, you understand? So we've been thinking about two months now on it. No any emergency team, maybe from the office of the FCT minister or the health commandant from the AMAC, that's municipal area council, you understand. So we have reached out to the Federal Refugee Commission, no emergency team, no quick response in it. So we just defend on maybe go to bring help to us. And so the resort to praying and hoping for a better life. Continue praying for Almighty Allah. We are not doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our life. It will change our life. Because since we didn't have, um, we didn't know that we are going to, we are going to sit in this place. Everybody has their own house. It's very nice. We are sitting uh, peaceful. We didn't know that this thing can going to happen to us. It is not, especially me, I'm not going to pray for anybody that this thing happened to us, happened to the person, no. Given the ongoing insecurity, level of destruction, and lack of basic services in the Northeast, a return home may be very far for these IDPs. Did you have to call on the government to provide a suitable environment where they could stay till insurgency is curbed? If there is a specific place for an IDP somewhere, we are ready if they will move out officially and give us shelter, health center, security for which to live in peace. We are ready for them. They should come and move to that specific place that they designed for IDP. This Abuja is not best for IDP livers. It's Melody Song.